Hello friends, this video on statistics part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1. Because center tendency, it's a very crucial parameter for statistics. What is center tendency? It is a measure that tells where the middle of the bunch of data lies. So you have a bunch of data and you want to know where the middle of the data lies, you can use central tendency. For example, you have this number, same school number, you have 90, 80 math score, 80, 80, or make it 88, 80, 70, 70, 70, 68, 65, 60, like that you have. Max minimum is 20 again. Now, you want to find what is the average. What is the central value? The central value will be somewhere here. Correct? Somewhere here you have to find average. So, central tendency will tell you from a given data, what is the average? What is the average? Where is the middle of data lies? So there are three parameters or there are three measures to find the central tendency. One is the mean, the other is median, and third is mode. I'll explain this, just remember the term. Mean, median, and mode are three measures of central tendency. And central tendency is nothing but, it is a measure where you can tell where the bunch of data lies, where the middle of the data lies. I'll explain. For example, let's talk about mean. So you have two students and you want to find who studies. So let's suppose student A, student A, this guy studies 4 hour, 2 hour, 3 hour, 4 hour, 5 hour. That's per day. On Monday he studied this month, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So we have observed this guy for 5 days and we observed that this guy studied this many hours. 4, 2, 3, 4, 5. The other guy is there, student B. This guy studied 5 hours, 4 hours and 5 hours and again 3 hours. He never, I mean for this we don't have data, data is not there. We could not find data. So we have data only this much data we have. Now looking at data, can we tell who studies more? It is difficult for us, right? So what we do, we'll find the mean. So mean of SA is nothing but 4 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 divide by number of days we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 divide by 4 plus 2, 6, 3, 9, 9 plus 9, 18 by 5 that is 3.6 for the student B since we have data only for 3 days so mean here will be 4 plus 5 plus 3 divide by 3 because we have data only for 3 days this comes out to be 12 by 3 this is 4 so we see that mean of student A, mean of student A is more than mean of student B, correct? So from this we can say that student A studies more than student B. It may not be correct because maybe that this guy studied 10 hours and 10 hours on Thursday and Friday but since we don't have data. But from whatever data we have, we can conclude that student A is studying more than student B. So for this, what we have done, we have used mean and mean is also nothing but one of the type of central tendency, one of the measure of central tendency. Mean also tells you where the exact center of beta is. For example, when you arrange this guy in this form, number line for example, you have this number line. Okay, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, let's suppose. The first value is 4, 4 is here, second value is 2, third is 3, then again 4 and then again 5. So if you see the mean is 3.6 that means 3 points somewhere here it tells that this is a central value of this data that means all this data revolves around this value. This is the central tendency of this data. Similarly for this value 4, 5, 3 if you take this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 it's 4, 5, 3 first value is 4 then 5 then 3 right the here the average came out to be 4 so if you see 4 is the central tendency of this data, right? This and this is equal to that. Central tendency is nothing but where the center of the data lies. And that is nothing but here in this case mean. Mean is you add all the numbers, you divide by number of the numbers, you get the mean. And from mean we found that who studies more. Here we found student A studies more than student B. So we can see the practical implementation of mean where we have bunch of data, where we have huge data and we actually are totally confused with the data so we can find out from the data we have taken decisions and the decision we took was that student A studies more than student B
or we have interpretation. This interpretation we got was student A studies more than student B. And to do this, we use statistics mean. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.